If you have tight lower back from sitting, you can't bend forward because you have tight hamstrings, there is a typical gymnast stretch that can help you with all of these. This exercise is the Jefferson Curl and in this video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it. We'll check the key points of the right execution in a bit, but before that it's really important for you to understand the following. For the first look, Jefferson curls look scary, especially if you see someone doing it with weight. Seeing the round back and the weight reminds most of the people of an instant hernia and that this exercise is not healthy at all. However, it's not exactly like that. Most of us heard that anything we reach for, we should do it with straight back to prevent an injury and yes, there is truth in that. Trainers and therapists usually recommend this for prevention because the basic theory, the starting point is that people are in bad shape and they need to protect their spine as it was glass. The spine and back of most people are not prepared to handle a sudden load, that's true, and if you have spine injury, this is not your exercise for sure, but it doesn't mean that the Jefferson curl doesn't have its place in training. But if you don't have spine issues and you're looking to fix the problems I mentioned before, the Jefferson curl might be a great way to gradually mobilize and strengthen your posterior chain and start to use your spine, move it as it should to prevent a possible future injury. Injuries happen when we don't expect them, what a surprise, and if you can, why not to prepare your body for unexpected situations as you do it with other joints as well. It's important to understand that the movement of our spine is just as important as other joints, matter of fact, this is one of the most important ones. There is even an ancient Chinese proverb that says, you're as old as your spine, meaning if you can't move your spine freely, you are old and limited. So as you can, and probably do move your ankles around after a long day off your shoes, so should you do with your spine as well. Our spine was designed to move. That's why we have all the separated bones, discs, connective tissues and muscles around it to be able to move it. As you already know from my previous videos, if you use, move and strengthen a body part, you practice a certain movement, you'll be better and better in it, sharpening and growing your movement body map so you can prevent injuries in unexpected situations and it's true for your spine as well. So just to summarize, if you have spine injuries, disorders, then this is not your exercise. If you have doubts, consult with your physician before you start practicing. And if you don't have any issues and fears, you're working out regularly and want to address the problems I mentioned before, then this exercise might change your life. The Jefferson curl improves the movement of your spine in the sagittal plane with a flexion movement, mobilizing and strengthening your posterior chain from top to bottom. Thanks to all above, it stretches your back, lower back muscles and hamstrings. So essentially, it's an exercise that actively stretches your whole body. Many people don't know or realize is that the different neck, back and lower back pain are all on the posterior chain and this single movement can fix them all. This is my personal and my students' experience. Even during the exercise, you can already feel relief, not to mention the long-term effects. You'll not only benefit from this exercise in training, but in your everyday life, like picking up or tying your shoes. If we talk about training, some of you guys asked how to be more flexible for the compression exercises of the gymnast six-pack workouts, and the Jefferson curl is definitely a way to do so. Incorporate the Jefferson curl into your stretching routine, and you can enjoy the benefits in the compression exercises. But before you grab a barbell and start doing Jefferson curls, there are a few things and key points that you need to keep in mind. First of all, Forget the weights and start with body weight. You need to learn and get comfortable with the right execution first. This is also a great test whether you feel pain during the movement or not. If yes, you better get after the problem with an expert. I know that pain is subjective, but I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Obviously the discomfort of the stretch is normal, I'm talking more about pain that appears suddenly in a specific segment, that's something which is not normal. You need to be aware and listen to the signs of your body. I don't want to overcomplicate this question, basically the Jefferson curl should give you a good feeling, a relief. The most uncomfortable point should be the lower end point where you feel the maximal stretch. You can do the Jefferson curl in any straddle and in closed stand. The wider the straddle, the easier it is and the closer your feet are to each other, the harder it is. In the beginning, just do it on the floor without weight and focus on the following key points. Stand in your desired starting position, personally I recommend the hip width straddle. Start the movement with tucking your head, touch your chest with your chin and start to fold vertebrae by vertebrae with keeping your arms in front of your body, following the movement with your shoulders. Your scapulas need to get into depressed and abducted position passively, so do protraction as you fold. 
When you start the movement, you can feel your glutes contracting and if you want to get the most out of the movement, you can even start with posterior pelvic tilt consciously. Normally, it's not really emphasized since the movement creates the contraction in the glutes itself, but it's just good to keep in mind. You can use your abdominal muscles the same way, consciously helping the flexion movement. Visualize the forward bend, vertebrae by vertebrae continuously while keeping your knees locked. This is how you can reach the maximal stretch. Bend forward as much as you can, you just need to hang, reaching down on the lower end point. You only need to pay attention to the locked knees that you can guarantee with squeezing your quads. After that, do the same movement reverse. This is the concentric phase that if you do right, you can activate and strengthen the posterior chain muscles gradually. As you progress upward, you can feel your hamstrings, glutes and back muscles to activate. In terms of breathing, if you do it really slowly, you can breathe calmly on your nose, but you can exhale in the eccentric phase and inhale in the concentric phase with the right speed. This will be one rep and you can do 5-10 reps in a set depending on the intensity. Just a quick note about the right execution, it's possible that you simply can't keep your knees locked and barely bend forward, I experienced this with many of my students. In this case, you can slightly bend your knees, don't worry, like this, your hamstrings will be stretched as well and you can enjoy the back stretch more. As you get more flexible, you can pay attention locking your knees. If you can touch the floor with your palms, that's a good basic level and you should aim for that. With that level of flexibility, you'll be able to do most of the bodyweight skills you want to achieve if you have the compression strength as well. As I mentioned, I recommend to start with body weight only to build up the body awareness and get comfortable with it. After time, you can use weight and do it on a stable elevated surface. The weight can be dumbbell, kettlebell, barbell, plates or anything you can measure. Just do it carefully and gradually. For the most benefits, you need weight for sure, but you don't need to go crazy. Start with as low as 5 kg and add weight only if you feel comfortable and ready. Many trainers suggest to go up to half of your body weight, which is in my case would be about 40 kg. However, I'm really satisfied with a single barbell. I feel great stretch even with that. So it's up to you, but it's really not the exercise where you need to lift heavy. With body weight, do up to 10 reps. With weight, 5 reps are perfectly enough if done controlled in 3 sets as part of your stretching routine. This will be the Jefferson Curl. If you want to have more similar videos about gymnast stretches, give this video a thumbs up so I know that you're interested. If you want to build up a shredded physique like gymnast have from zero, following my thorough system, click the link below, sign up today and get access to all of my programs, tutorials, series and much more. I can also help you personally in the private community in the live Q&As. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did so, please like, share and write a comment what you want to see in the next videos. If you don't want to miss the new videos, subscribe with notifications on and see you next week in the next video.